aggressive. Really took advantage of uh, the teleportation. I believe he also favored getting a hold of some nulls early for some yes. benefit right click, you know, and just a good Ten overall seconds. global pressing. So this is. I would imagine being TC's Dragon Knight, the hero he did Five used to play seconds. very frequently, Remaining. and then possibly KVH, their stand-in for Ush, if Ten he does seconds. fill up the core role, Remaining. will be taking a hold of this Weaver. That allows now Clockwork, of course, to be in the off lane, Five and seconds. that puts Undying side-by-side side with that Weaver, adding in that extra bit of heal. And the last grab here for Leviathan is going to be the Clinks. Clinks we've only seen a couple of times now. He received a bit of a nice change in the recent patch. Now that Searing arrow can be benefited from your Desolator, from your Diffusal Blade, from any of those orb attacks that once he couldn't take advantage of. So we'll see if it's something Shredder goes for. From watching Shredder play, this guy is a fantastic farmer. He's definitely great in the hands of like a no. Spectre and what have you. I've seen him farm a lot. And just as I say that mod, they're going to do a flip. <laughs> they're going to do another flip. Can you just make my job a little bit easier, please? <laughs> I mean, why do I even try, Mon? I just need to wait, I guess. Yeah, you just need to, you just need to hold on, man. Like, you're just like, yeah, Shredder. Stop switching, oh. for God's sakes. Like, they, they just wanted to screw with you, I think, man. They're going to, at the end of this, it's going to be Shredder. See, he's back. He's back at the clinks. He's they just, just wanted to screw with, with you. It's, it's going to be Shredder. <laughs> the other funny note, and it's a shame that Clinks doesn't have a lot of cosmetics, is this guy must be rich or something, because I've seen him pull out the Alpine set on Ursa. I think I've seen him even do the Dragon Claw hook on Pudge. This kid nice. loves dressing up. He loves having a big fashion statement, but unfortunately, Clinks doesn't really have a lot to show yeah. off. But hey, Clinks is like items and sets are just they're they're not great. They're pretty, they're just, yeah, I mean, let's I mean be he has, here. people can build cosmetics for him. I don't know why they don't. It's like he was just ass or something. Yeah. People just don't like let's him. Let's get some. Let's get some. You know, American Apparel out there for our Clinks, please. All right, cosmetic people out there. All right. Well, anyways, here we are, folks. We're into the match now. This is game number two. We have three American matches for you today here for the Summit 2 by G2A.com. And without further ado, I'd be happy to introduce your Radiant side. It's Team Leviathan. They won the coin flip. They had first pick, and they took it on the brew. Now, Duncan out here. We got Sunken playing on your Skywrath Mage support up in this off lane. It looks like he might be side by side with Jenkins. The axe is a very manly axe at that, and the mask as well. I believe that's the BTS max, if I say to myself. Anyways, along the mid lane, it's going to be Shitty playing your Brewmaster. No surprise there. Shredder is indeed going to be playing your core clinks along the bottom and side by side with Mr. Newsham, who's going to be playing your Abaddon. Yeah, and on the other side of things, for Sneaky Nick's Assassins, your dire team, fluffing stuff in the bottom lane, Running towards mid on the Undying, currently are down to that bottom rune spot, perhaps. Uh, KBH is going to be pulling the Weaver there with him alongside. Meanwhile, mid lane TC on his DK, one of his more famous heroes. Top lane, right here, your support for position Nature's Prophet, getting run down by Jenkins here. And to finish it all off, it'll be IX Mike 88, safe lane clockwork. A nice little mustachio coming through with Of course, he's got nice a little helmet, mustache so. cosmetic. Of course, he does. Seriously. Freaking guy. So it looks like it's going to be a 2-1-2 lineup from both teams as uh, potentially the Whitebeard will be hopping and bopping all over the place, of course, once he gets a hold of uh, a few levels and maybe a null under his belt. He'll look to try to press the action all over the place. So without further ado, we'll hop up that glass sits. It looks like TC is going to rush forward for that bottle. More traditional, you know, DK style, getting the bottle crow happening right here. Breathe the fire on the creeps. Get the CS in your favor. Get to level 6 and get some damage on that tower. But nope, top lane, Jenkins is not looking to, you know, get take take a slow start. He's already moving in. He's trying to get the spins off right now, and, Ma and uh, Mike pulls out the early cog level right there just to help out in case. But you got to be risky about that. Or, you know, if you accidentally get yourself caught with Axe, things could be a bit devastating. And they won't be able to really do anything in this top lane, I don't think, unless they can get a rotation. Bottom lane is where they're going to get things happening because you have the TP coming in from the Furion, um, and he went for Trance first, which is interesting on a support position. Uh, Furion, usually you get the teleport first and sprout as, as soon as you can afterwards, but I don't know if they're going to be getting involved in that many kills. I think they just want to secure their lane, secure farm, especially for KVH and obviously in the mid lane on TC, who already has his bottle now. He's doing rather well for himself, so. Yep, and Shibby's going to be doing more of the same. Mid lane, it's just going to be more of that respect farm. A, you know, a little bit of a, a tit for tat here as they try to flirt back and forth with some of the last hits and harassment, but their priority is getting the levels, getting the CS, getting their level six. 
and then making it work from there. Brew could look to venture out, but already early rotation coming in. It's Fluff on this Undying, heading towards that mid lane, but he quickly gets pinged out. They have the nice obs right here to see the rotation happening. You know, he might be too late if he was considering making a go top lane, at the White Courier, Beard. but top lane, yeah, they're moving on in. Whitebeard, very low on life. This could be your first blood. It takes one more right click. He wants it. He goes a little too far. He might pay for this one, and he will. Oh, it's Mike who picks up the first blood. Jenkins, is RNG with you, sir? Oh, it almost is, and he can't even catch Mike at the end. Mike quickly salves up, and unfortunately, the Birdman is the first to fall. Jenkins needs to be careful. I mean, Mike might not be able to kill him. He's kind of tanky. Yeah, actually, he's maybe uh -oh. Oh, he he's traps dead, him in. Actually. This is what I'm talking about now. Jenkins, though, he's not getting the harassment from the creeps to get some extra spins, but they get their redemption, and they take down the clockwork. So that's a fair trade now for him. But given the fact they handed over the bit of a bonus of first blood, I think Mike is okay with that. Ideally, though, you don't want to hand over kills like that. I think Mike... He cogged in a creep. I don't think he would have gotten the kill either way. Um, and that was just because Sunken came back in. And that was the thing. You know, they had, I, I wasn't assuming him to get back there that quickly. But he does go down. Mike with a bit of a misplay. You talked about, though, they get the first flip. That's huge. Whitebeard has to TP back home. He's going to be going for these no talismans. He's got two mantles already up in his inventory. But we'll see where he goes next. If he goes back top or if he heads bottom. Looks like he's going back top, though. That's, that's going to be his choice of destination. So. Yeah. You also have to make sure you don't want to be taking away too much from your Clockwork. Clockwork wants to get that level 6. He wants to start being the, the the guy who can jump into the fray with that hook shot and get things rolling for your team, setting the pace as far as how the fights are going to go. And, uh, you know, Furion at any moment can just kind of step back and make a go on to farming the jungle instead with those Treons. But for now, he's just going to hang by his side. Meanwhile, there's Fluff again. He's lingering nearby. They, they saw him rotate over, and I think they even just pinged him out. But he is mm. eager to Top lane. Know, make something happen. But damn, speaking of which, they make a go. I catch the back end of that one. It's Mike who falls once again to the hands of Skyrath Mage. I guess he just got caught out. Yeah, but he ran, Jenkins ran up, Berserkers called, Mike couldn't do anything there. He got uh, counter helix a couple times, they threw the Arcane Bolt, just an easy kill. So Mike getting caught out of position again, and he just play more carefully. Like, we saw the same thing happen where he gets caught out in ESL and he dies as Centaur. And now he has two deaths and a solo, well, dual safe lane in the top lane. Kind of rough, so... So bottom lane surprisingly being a bit quiet from both sides as they continue to build up their own CS. It's Clinks who's got 17 and 6 to Weaver's 15. So a slight nod towards uh, Shredder on this Clinks uh, with the bat just constantly there looking to babysit. He hasn't got anything for himself, but you know he knows that he's playing very selflessly right here, just in case anyone does make the jump. But it's not like they have a whole lot of lockdown as it is. So you know, but a bat as it is can't really roam around too heavy. So he'll just plant himself there, but here we go. Fluff is actually going to ditch the bottom lane. Feels that Weaver can hold his own, you know, being as elusive as he is. And he's going to try to aid this top lane a bit more. With all the creeps, and, you know, Jenkins is a hero that is... He wants to bank on the creeps being there to be able to get as many spins off as possible, but that's where Undying likes it. If he gets a nice... Uh, well, he didn't even level it up. I was going to say a big soul rip. You know, that would definitely benefit. But that's something that could come into play later on. But for now, he's just kind of planning himself. He has the tombstone ready to go. But he's playing very, very patiently right here. He's got two points of decay rather than two points of tombstone, which is very interesting. Sprouts up on Jenkins, though. They're going to maybe look for a go, but uh, they eat through the tree. Nicely done with the tango coming out. Tombstone goes. That actually does absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's, that was, uh, that's, a, that's a bit of a whiff on the gank, unfortunately, for them. So, you know, now maybe they could just try to zone them back and take control of the CS. But the creeps have already pushed themselves well under the tower. So things not going as well as uh, Snob would like in this top lane. For mid lane, you know, TC's holding his own in this DK. He's 27 now to, uh, to Bruce 23. Nothing very significant for either. They are level 6 now, so even if he wanted to rotate and try to get a hold of this brew, he does have primal split. It's going to get that much harder. Shredder on the bottom is still only level 4. He's getting harassed out from Weaver, who is level 5. So relatively calm from everywhere else. Top lane, kind of a hot mess. You know, so hopefully they can look to shake things off and make a comeback. I mean, this is the problem with supports like an Interest Prophet and an Undying. And they're, I mean, they, they, they've rotated out of bottom where KBH was getting used to farm. And luckily, he's still in, but oh god. Uh -oh. They, there's a battle at the runes here, and it forces Brew to pull out the split. And Fluff, unfortunately, might be the victim of this. He quickly cyclones up TC and finishes what he started there on Fluff. Nice grab right there from Shibby, and now he puts his sights on TC. Abaddon is now in the mix. And Skyrath here as well with not much mana to work with, but nice Sprout going to block them back. Coming out from Whitebeard right there. Does slow their roll. A man who's a true bodyguard, it looks like. In the bottom, there's yeah. going to be a DD, and it's going to allow TC to rotate all the way down there, bottle it up, and regen all that life back.
Uh, that should have been a kill. That's just a great sprout from Whitebeard. That salvages at least something for Nyx Assassins. They're down through one already. And, and again, I really just don't like the support duo of the um, Whitebeard, Furion, and, and Fluff on that Undying. It just, it's not doing anything. I mean, Decay, he skilled it up twice. And he's really yet to use it and be effective with it. And TC, I mean, it, this is going to be a game where it needs to go late because he's going to be the one that's dishing out all the damage. Yeah. I mean, Mike is getting a little bit more top now, but he's not getting all that much still in comparison to what you have going in the bottom lane, what you have going in the mid lane coming out for Leviathan. So it's all of a sudden, Leviathan, who are a team that certainly shouldn't be winning this game, at least by odd standards. Uh -oh. oh, they dropped the sentry. Can they get the vision to quickly take down Weaver? He does not have the mana for time lapse. Oh no, yeah, he's gonna nice fall. Chance. Sunken Think gets the long range from beginning. downtown throw on the arcane bolt. And that is not good. Unfortunately, Weaver will fall in that bottom lane. Four to one, big Fire advantage God. for Leviathan at the start of this one. I mean, this is just so greedy coming out from Nyx Assassins, and I mean, even Mike's getting chased around top lane. He's got to hook in, though. Uh oh, well, he wants to go toe to toe with one of the manliest ones in the game, and they just keep bringing out the battery salt and the right clicks. But he is oh oh, oh. was that a fake out? It was. There's yeah. the second jam right there, and Mike goes down. Jenkins gets it done, and still sneaky Nyx Assassins continue to fall. But now Jenkins now under pressure. <laughs> well, a sweeping in dragon just blows out the fire, and he is burnt to a crisp. And, uh, well, at least Nyx Assassins the do get the fire back on that front. They get attack. another kill finally on the board. Uh, and TC wants to take advantage of this attack. dragon form and get as much damage in as possible on this tower. And meanwhile, bottom lane, they're going back in on KVH. You can see Skyrath did pick up an Envy's room, but KVH seems to know that something's amiss, so he walks away. Yeah, he's actually got a creep cut, maybe? Yeah, he's creep cutting. Yeah, but they this don't have detection. This is actually detention. something that <laughs> this is really impressive coming out from Weaver, but... Got to be careful, though. Skyrus right there. Obviously, he's almost level 6, but he pulls out the Ancient Seal. Early Arcane Bolt Harassment. He's uh, not going to be fine. able to take him down. Actually, he has to pull out the Time Lapse right there. Shredder's not going to be there to really dish out any sort of damage, and... Well, I guess they make him spend out the ultimate. Had Skyrath been level 6, maybe things could be different. You know, Weaver being as weak as he is early on, but look at this. Mike has uh, diverted from the top lane and wants to take advantage of his level 6 hookshot and get a hold of someone. Ideally, the chicken man. So he's looking at below and hoping he has the vision to make a jump in happen right here. Weaver is still lingering nearby. This could he's be a successful dust. gank if they want it. Mike has dust. He can go at Shredder if he wants to as well. And he is. Yep. He's going to hook in. Shredder gets cogged up. Dust goes. Shredder's about to fall and will. Ixmik gets the kill. TP back in from Whitebeard as well as the Leviathan's new sham. Yep. And uh, pressure the tower now. It looks like they want to go for the tier 1 or at least put some damage onto it. Very nice gank. I mean, just proper execution, making sure you have the dust so that you don't jump in and then lose sight of the clinks. You know, can't ask for anything better. Just maybe a lack of communication from Leviathan. Noticing that Mike's been gone a little too long, but really by that close to the tower, there's not much you can do. I mean, it's just one of those things that just really is the inevitable. The top lane, though, Jenkins. Wow, slices down Fluff just like that. Now going on Whitebeard. He's pushing on forward, using that extra move speed to get some right clicks in. And look who's here. It's Shredder. Double slam jam coming up for Jenkins. He is above the rim right now as he takes down another casualty. And he's off to a fantastic start. And he already has that blink dagger, boy. Ooh, this is scary for Sneaky Nick's Assassins. Jenkins is now going to be the one true initiator. This is the. Uh, this was what I was talking about. The draft is Leviathan making sure they get these blink daggers early on. I mean, they have both Chibi having one, and now they have obviously uh, Jenkins as well. So this becomes very difficult here. KVH can't always just Shikuchi away anymore. Um, he's just gonna get brought down by you know Berserker's call. He's gonna get slam jammed like he talked about. Shibi is also gonna jump in. He'll thunderclap. He'll promise good as well. So this becomes very difficult. And they're really not getting much out of the map, except for TC, who does have the highest stand worth. But they will hook in on the Shredder top lane. Oh, okay. And uh, top Mike lane. should grab his kill. Make a jump. Shredder's caught near the tower. And they easily take him down. Nice grab there from Mike, though. That turns attention here on the bottom. TC moves in, gets Ancient sealed up with that Dragon Form. Promptly jumps back, but Sunken back behind the tower here. Might be scouted out from the Weaver. Jenkins shows up, finishes off TC, and now turns his sights on to another slam. Jesus Christ, this kid. Takes down the Weaver as well. He is just on all cylinders right now, trying his best to snowball out of control on this axe, and it definitely pays off. They do lose their clinks, but they take down not one, but two cores on the side of Sneaky Nyx Assassins. I mean, this is... This is just a... It's, it's actually disgusting how well the Leviathan are playing. There's a split in the top lane. Fluff getting caught out. Takes the boulder toss right oh, to the man. face. He's getting chased oh, down, and then Shredder comes in with one last right click to help out get the job done. They get yet another kill as they're trying to pressure top. Really, there is nothing going the way of Nyx's stats with the exception of TC, maybe. Radiant so, and, and even that, I mean, he has a bracer and treads, and that is it. 
though. I don't know. It's Maybe, rough. you know, sneaky Nyx assassins. They pull out uh, an intriguing draft, I'll say. You know, doing with the four position Furion and then having the Undying as well support. Maybe you would like to go with one of the old standards as far as your support play, and then maybe you have something that's interesting to follow up. You know, I threw out the name Ancient Apparition, that might have worked out, but here we go, Mike makes another jump in on Shredder. He's had his number for the past two times. Can he make it three right now? Concussive shot. Oh no, Mystic Flare flies and ends up being a one for one. Still, they take down the Planks, which is a nice grab. The Whitebeard rotates in, and Shibby is right on the case here, as now he's gonna get zoned out. Sunken looking to pursue, uh-oh. Look who it is. Jenkins is here, and he sees blood, he wants it, he's running on in, but before he can even get the opportunity to slam him down with the ultimate, Shibi cleans it up, and they make it another better exchange for Leviathan, a 2-4-1. They were diving bottom as well, and uh, Nushin was able to TP out. That was underneath a tombstone as well as KVH was right click, so even when Nyx Assassins feel like they have something going, they can't get it done. Um, the thing I have a, a problem with for Leviathan is, is, again, you talk about how often Shredder's getting picked off. Like, you need to not die, man. You need to just, like, not die, help find kills, or just farm up. And, and right now, I mean, he's he's always in dangerous positions. And I feel like also they need to man up. Leviathan needs to fight a bit more aggressively here. Fluff is wounded, standing right near, and Shredder just sees him, and then he falls immediately. Now attention on Whitebeard, who also doesn't have the biggest life pull to support. He goes down as well. Two supports to fall. They want Shredder, though, and they get it. TC's right there to clean it up. But Weaver does get the last hit, so a nice turn of events for Sneaky Nyx Assassins, but they still have to lose two. They are not getting the better end of these engagements, though they do manage to grab one, and they also take the tower. So I would say a relative stalemate at the end of that one, getting the two for one plus the tower, but... You know, we'll see. They need to keep the momentum going in their favor, but that's hard when you have an axe uh, on the other Mike. side. He's currently Mike. making a move on Mike. He's got Mike. the shield as well. He is happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the clockwork. And now it's a battle arena as he drops down the baby nip. Cogs and gets sliced apart. The mustache has been shaved. Now Jenkins getting properly healed up. TC moves in. He's got to get out of here quick. His dragon form's going to expire, but he gets silenced out and taken down as well. Overzealous play from sneaky Nyx assassins is costing him dramatically. I hope they did not underestimate Team Leviathan because, like I said, these guys look real good as they 2 0 all the way through the qualifiers and now are standing strong against one of the better teams here in NA Dota. I'm just gonna be honest, man. Mike is doing some real questionable shit. Like it's it's actually like what are you, you're walking in, man? What do you expect to happen? Jenkins is just gonna run him right on top of you. I know you got a blade mill, dude, but like, yeah, I, just some of the plays they're making are, are so weird. Although on the on the other side of things, Leviathan could have done so much more in that bottom lane. They could have kept their tower alive had Jenkins been there a bit earlier. But he gets there for the redemption kill on not one but two of the cores of Sneaky Nick's assassins, and you've got to hope that. If you're a Sneaky Nyx Assassin's fan, KVH can get attack. some farm, get something going, because he has his Perseverance, but that is it. Although they are shredding Shredder down very well, I mean, he's below half in the net worth chart here. Uh, I feel like if Leviathan starts to group up and go for kills, they're just going to start balling out of control. And they're going to do just that with a smoke from Jenkins and a TP to the mid lane here. They're going to try to find some heroes out. And they want to jump in. There's Jenkins, grabs the two. Shibby's right there. He waits out the jump not once, not twice, but finally Shibby does clean it up. Now TC under pressure, and they decide to pull back. As Mike does show up, he's got the blade mail popped, ready to go right here. They don't take anyone, but now they look to turn back on Shibby, who does not have the split, and he goes down. He quickly, though, buys his Vlads right before he dies. So nice quick purchase for them. And for Sneaky Nyx Assassins, they're happy to turn it back. They lose their fluff and stuff support, but they get the brew. So a nice exchange for them. Meanwhile, top lane, it's Weaver who continues to harass him on about. He's got his perseverance. He's desperately Radiance trying to build towards that Lincoln, which would um, definitely aid him about. But he is going to fall behind still with the damage. But to the benefit of them, Clinks, who's supposed to be the real late gamer for Team Leviathan, has not really shown a whole lot of farm for himself. You know, Shredder, he's way down on his net worth shot, only 4,200 gold. And really, he's like halfway between an Orchid, he's got a Bassy and an Ogre Axe. I don't know what the hell this kid's trying to build, but it's a bit all over the place. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. He's just trying to find something at this point, and that's because he's died so often. Mid, mid lane, actually, that engagement went pretty poorly. Jenkins actually culling bladed a creep instead of culling blading um, the undying, which would have given him his cooldown, and obviously TC would have gotten culling bladed as well. Yeah. So that's a bit of a misplay from Jenkins there. So a 
bit unfortunate, but they're going to try to find a redemption kill on Fluff, and they will. Oh, here we go. Fluff, who has been unfortunately caught out many a time, now going to get zoned. But here comes Whitebeard, thinking about assisting, but he has to pull back. They just sacrifice over Fluff again. He is now 0-6. and six. A very rough game for him on this support undying is really nowhere is safe. It looked like maybe he was going on through trying to get a D ward there. He puts down the sentry, and that sentry will see this very pretty butterfly ward. So eventually they'll look to the take that down, but it ends up costing him his life, unfortunately. Ravians now looking to push down this mid lane, maybe adding some objectives, because really, they, you know, Leviathan, they're getting a lot of kills. It's 18 to 7, but yet to take objectives. But here we go. Mike jumps on in. He wants that Shredder. Shredder gets healed up with the shield. The Baton's right there to aid him out. He can throw out the Mist Coil as well to save him, but the dust is going to be popped, and Shredder might fall here. Gets healed up there at the end. Ultimately, they work for it, and they get it done, but they will lose Mike in exchange. Still a better exchange. They now turn, get rid of that Tombstone, and Fluff Oh boy, he's got to go. The Rock catches him on the backhand side. He may look like a big beastly zombie, but, you know, they'll be able to get him down with one more light click, and now they make it better for them. TC shows up, and he quickly gets cycloned up. Ancient Seal to follow it on up, while also Whitebeard tries to get into the fray. TC eating a lot of damage. Oh, they don't even need the slam. He ends up going down. Now Weaver as well. This is not looking good, but Jenkins, also very low, who has a nice bounty. Six and one will end up falling. He hands that bounty over to the Weaver, make it three for two at the end of it. And really though, it's kind of hard to say who comes out on top of that one, but yeah, I don't know. Honestly, that 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 is probably one of the most even fights this game has seen. It's 21 to nine, but somehow Seekenix assassins are still in this game and they're doing pretty well just because KVH is actually just split pushing and, and not dying, which is the exception. It's the difference between him and Shredder. Shredder has five deaths, KVH is two. That's really an issue here, like, no. Oh! Uh, as, as I say that, though, he, gets blown, he gets blown up, my god. That was so quick, he couldn't even quickly react at all with a with an R press or anything. He was just done for. His shibby just sees the bug and he squashes it right under his foot. That was unmerciful right there, and just as we're trying to get, yeah, give, give Sneaky Nick Assassin's props for coming back into it, which they really are, because they've also taken some objectives. You know, two towers have fallen, actually three, they've taken all three tier ones, so the net worth isn't as dramatic as it is, though this does leave Leviathan the opportunity to really bring in a lot of gold, and now they turn their sights on TC. Mystic Player brings him down to half, another Arcane Bolt. Skywrath alone almost takes him all the way down, and oh, they need another right click. Shibby is greedy for this one, gets cogged up right there, but ultimately Whitebeard also gets taken down immediately down on the bottom lane in the hands of Axe. Jenkins finds another while action was happening there in the mid lane. Mike just saved TZ's life with that hook shot though. Those cogs pushed everybody back or Incoming. made them stay in the cogs where they wanted to go and get TZ. They couldn't dive past the tower. TZ stays alive. He's able to regen up. He's going to head back home. He's getting towards that BKB. Once he gets this BKB, all of a sudden, this team fight from Leviathan doesn't look as solid. No, but, no, uh, jump Shibi in. in. Shibi again pulls out the clap and the bare necessities. He looks to make a go on Mike right here. And with the benefit of Shredder, they make easy work of the Mustache Man. They clean it up. They step on back. But still, let's get some objectives, boys. Leviathan needs to start taking some towers on the back end of these kills and taking advantage in numbers. I mean, Shredder just needs something. He needs anything right now. Like... Deathback is not helping him enough. Towers are certainly going to get him towards that first big item. Glyph does go. Nature's Wrath. Meanwhile, top lane. I mean, you're going to take an objective, but you might lose the tier 2 tower. They're just going to put pressure on it. So this is what I think Nature are doing well on. This 4 position, Nature's Prophet is starting to pay off. I mean, Whitebeard actually has an Oblivion Staff already, and he's getting a second one. He's very close to it. So Orca's going to be coming soon, and that's huge. That is huge indeed. Shredder quickly pulls on back, sees TC. Those bugs definitely work out though in that top lane. Had he not got the swarm off, Jenkins could have potentially blink in and catch up, but a nice utility to have there for friend Jenkins from being able to initiate it and move on forward. He gets a shield up right now and they continue their pursuit up in this top lane. Would love to make another go at another tier one if possible here, but meanwhile bottom, Shibby pops his invis after quickly blinking away by the side of Mike and Mike looks to move on from behind. Now Mike had this blade mail, for a long while, love to get a hold of this four staff though. I mean, the problem is when you're a clockwork. Oh, uh, hold on though. Hold that thought. Shibby is. Oh, look at this. Hi everyone. I see you're doing Roche. Yeah, and I see you don't have detection. I'm just gonna sit on here and wait and just, you know, tell my team this is happening. And, uh, oh, this is close. It's, it's, it's gonna be close. The, the duration. Oh man, this will be big if he gets all of it. I think he, he might be able to snatch this. It's very close. His invis is almost going to ride. Oh my god. Oh my Should god. we make the play, man? He oh, he got it. it. Oh my god. Oh, the sneaky Nyx assassins are like, wait, what the hell happened? Should he grabs oh, he it. Oh, he flicks in the trees. Nice. He's no oh, TP. Oh, man. But... 
<laughs> the walls in all chats or in uh, team chat. Yeah, you can what hear them all laughing right now. <laughs> Just in the characters, you hear the LOLs dropping from both sides, it sounds like. And <laughs> they did not have the sentries there. Oh, that's unfortunate as they just get it taken away, all that effort for just a simple Roche takedown, but no benefit of the extra life, and Shibby's like, thanks guys, no problem, you do the muscle work and I'll just take the reward. Uh oh, top lane though, they see Weaver. Oh, a solo kill from Sunken, takes down the core Weaver. Oh man, that is rough, and now they go back towards this tier two and they will finish what they started. That Sunken actually, I don't even know if he knew that the Lincoln Spear was up, but he killed him anyways. Just a really nice play there, and this Roche deal actually might be, that, that Aegis deal might be a bigger deal than we're making it out to be. That's a pretty big deal already. Crimson Guard is coming out as well to Axe, and that's a huge item against Tombstone, up against the right click coming out yeah. from the Weaver, from the Trance, everything. This is going to be huge from the beginning of the tier 3 and take this tier 3 tower instead of Rax, but... What what is Sneaky Nixus has to do? They're just staying down bottom currently. They're not really trying to defend. Mike has to go back and buy a TP. And this is the issue I see so often with him. He gets stuck at that blade mill. He cannot get to that next item. And a TP scroll, you gotta get that, but you gotta get back up there and help your team out, man. Yeah, the tower now have to at half life forces them to pull out the glyph. And I think Leviathan finally make the call to pull back. They got some good damage in. And they're gonna walk away with all those rewards. Now they'll they'll look to gather up. And then I would imagine they're going to go again for another fight on the back of this, uh, oh, what the hell? Yeah. White Beard falls to the bottom because he didn't know that Jenkins would be in the neighborhood and he just swiftly jumps in and gets the job done. TP's down bottom, behind the trees, uh, which is a really often TP spot. He just walks forward and blinks onto White Beard who just dies. Um, standard Too squishy. Down. I mean, yeah, this is just standard axe play. I mean, like, if you're going to catch somebody out of position, be like that's one of the easiest heroes oh. to kill. It'd be very squishy. Only way to get out is a TP. So just kills him, and uh, there's still a tier one tower bottom, and you can bet that they're going to take this tower now. So well, they move in, and you know what was the advantage for the sneaky Nyx assassins was having all those towers taken down and still holding their own as far as net worth and item progression. But that is quickly nice. falling away from them. I mean, before that Roche incident happened, I was talking about how Mike. Just desperately trying to get a hold of a four staff. It would help him so much because already as it is, if he makes a jump in and Skyrath Mage is in the neighborhood, he's just going to drop a Mystic Flare on top of his head and there's nothing he can do about it until he gets that Mystic Flare to help himself get out or anyone else. So it looks like Leviathan just taking advantage of that move on forward. Shredder now does get his BKB complete and with nearly 1k in reserve, is going to continue to build up the extra damage, the extra da um, items. And they're adding pressure on the top. It looks like they're going to go for a trade as uh, TC Radiant pops out his dragon form. The glyph is going to be there and uh, already the rotation in. Shibi's going to be the first on the scene. Jump in, clap right now. Radiant Catches on the two. Can't get the split off yet as the dragon kill will be there from TC. But, you know, now he won't have vision to see Whitebeard on the side that sprout. Oh, but he actually second guesses the TP and he actually will stay. Seeing that no one else is coming in because it looks like Leviathan are going for high ground here on the bottom lane and it leaves Shibby all alone to try to defend. Now finally Whitebeard does make his swift escape. The tower is still taking damage from those Treons, from those creeps, and he's on the hunt. He would love to get old. Yeah. TC BKB and tried to TP bottom, but he canceled it for whatever reason. And I'm oh, not sure no. if that's going to be huge or not. It looks like it will be. And they're still there on the bottom, duking it out while TC's getting gone on. Sunken mentions to clean up the Weaver again. Now Weaver has forced to buy back. TC's still not here. He's getting chased out from Shibby, so it's only a four bar, four on four rather. And another kill for Skyrath Mage as he takes down Whitebeard. Jenkins is still holding strong, pushing oh. on forward. Fluff is going to be there tr desperately trying to slow them down as much as possible. But man, Team Leviathan not letting up. They have taken the reins of this game. And for Sneaky Nick's Assassins, I don't know if they Radiant underestimated their opponents or just kind of threw together a draft that did not work out for them. But I can't take away too much credit from Team Leviathan. They've been looking pretty sharp. I mean, they have 28 kills at 25 minutes of the game. They're they're so... Other than the Clinks, they're playing so damn well. The, the Clinks, Shredder has had a rough time, but he's starting to catch up. He has his BKB now, and he hasn't died since he had those original fifth deaths. And on top of this, I mean, the Skyrath Mage is playing out of control. I don't know how TC canceled that TP. He BKB'd, so I, I'm pretty sure he just moved or something, but... And he doesn't TP with Dragon Form there, and uh, they don't grab any kill and they kills, and they have to force a buyback on KVH, which is just huge. They don't get the Tier 3 tower, but they still put a lot of pressure there. And, um, yeah, again, it's going to come down to another Assault Cross, I think, from the Brewmaster, much like it was in the last game. And with this item, all of a sudden, again, uh, Leviathan can just push in and just take this advantage. There is no Aegis, however. It does get reclaimed, so uh, the duration has gone. But there it is, Assault Curiosity, 25 minutes in, so there's the trade-off. 
And now things are getting even better. Another utility brewmaster quickly being built up, and that will help with the siege as they've already taken Hydron on two different occasions. This is going to make it a lot better to finish those structures and, of course, benefit the rest of the team with a little bit of extra durability, a little bit extra armor. But here we go. Jenkins looking to make a go on Whitebeard. The Whitebeard gets the sprout off, and Jenkins will not be able to pursue. So he makes a swift escape, but constantly on the defensive here is Team Sneaky Nyx Assassins. And Weaver, who had been the uh, looking to build up and pull it out for the Lincoln, had fallen time after time, even with the Lincolns. You know, the Force Staff does remove that, and then they just quickly try to clean him up. But here we go on the retreat. Tombstone going to be popped defensively, but still Shibi moves in, pulls out the Primal Split, gets the stone on Mike. Mike still doesn't have that Force Staff. Oh, he does have the Force Staff, but it's already on cooldown, so he can't quite get away from this one. He pops his Blade Mail, steps on over. Meanwhile, TC and Jenkins there, but he can't get the, he can't get the call off on time, so he will make a TP out. But Mike, though, might not be so lucky. Very low, about 100 life. And Shibby jumps in and gives him a round of applause. The clap, if you will. He takes him down. Fluff going to make escape with that TP. Meanwhile, mid lane, they're pressing on in. Sunken scouts out Whitebeard. Oh, the Mystic Flare is going to be up and ahead. TC rolls through it, no problem. Jumps in. Dragon Tail going to land. And ultimately, he will end up falling. Shredder gets the last hit in and takes down Whitebeard. And now, quickly, they're on the way back out. They do lose their Skywrath Mage, you know, definitely under the hands of TC. And they pull on back, but still a two for one benefit for Team Leviathan. They push ahead 30 to 11. They're, I, I really like what Leviathan are doing. You can see they're paint, playing a little bit too aggressively here, but they're making sure that this Weaver doesn't get anything for free. I mean, he has his Lincoln Sphere, and he's been into the jungle a couple of times, but while that's happening, I mean, just the rest of his team is either dying or they're getting pushed on or they're losing objectives. They're not making it easy, and TC's going to get caught out in the mid lane as well. Body block coming through, but nice Dragon Tail. Blink clap, no split available. There's going to be a nice little Tombstone drop down as well. TC's so slow right now. Flare's going to come in as well, trying to stop Shibi from right-clicking away on this guy. This might be too much, Shibi, my friend. Man, they're really helping out TC. They get the sprout that helps out. Now the cog comes in as well. And this could be a promising turn of events here for Sneaky Nyx Assassins if they can't capitalize. But ultimately, they take down the brew, but Jenkins is right there, takes down TC, and they want more. Whitebeard is going to fall right there in the hands of Shredder. And they take down two. They only lose the brew. Weaver's still in the area, but doesn't nearly have enough damage to get it done. And, you know, Leviathan step back, regroup and maybe consider pushing on in. But without Brew to be there, maybe they just kind of keep the aggressive, uh, they keep the creep waves pushed up, step back, and get some wards down near the Roche Pit because that might be the next objective they want to go for here while Weaver is desperately trying to find the farm. Now at about 21, 2200 gold, looking to bring in something, a Desolator or what have you, but you know, not letting up is Jenkins. He's scouting out, looking for an opportunity to may maybe make a jump here. I don't know if he's going to be able to get it. Jumps in, does the call, but can't quite catch him. The Lincolns is going to be removed from the uh, from the call right there. Or sorry, from the uh, battle hunger. But he quickly pulls back to base. Yeah, and that's, again, they, they don't want KVH roaming free down in that top line. Uh, I think KVH bought something. Yeah, he's getting a Mythical Hammer, whether that's a BKB or Desolator. Probably a Deso. Coming in, he needs more damage. I mean, Shredder only has a BKB, and he's popping Whitebeard. He's getting blown up. And Fluff and stuff is, is pretty squishy as well, even with that buckler. And it looks like this he's going to go really, for really Desolator. Smart. So smart. Yeah. So Shredder taking advantage of that latest edition in 6.82. So we got one hammer. The money for a second one. But uh-oh. TC does have to pull out the BKB to avoid the extra damage. But Mike is on the return. Jumps in with a very nice hook shot. But he ends up getting popped out right there. Uses the Force Staff to get away. Shield is there as well. How long can they save their support? A missed coil as well. They're really making it's not work for even the supports at this point. Shredder pops his BKB and is on pursuit trying to take down Fluff. Fluff hides himself in a corner from this one. Can he get scouted? He will. Fluff will get stuffed as he ends up dropping right there. Shredder now dominating. Now TC gets surrounded and taken apart. Sunken picks up a double kill for them. They take down three. And Sneaky Nyx Assassins can't even take down the Skyrath support on a counter initiation. That just goes to show how quickly they're falling behind here or how good Team Leviathan are looking. I mean... The only, the only thing Nyx Assassins can do in this game is just split push. I mean, KBH isn't going to rotate over until he knows he has an item that can do work. Whitebeard's died more often than he's been effective in these fights, too. Like, he just dies to Shredder. So there's no point for him porting in. Because his position is not nearly good enough for him to be okay in these situations. I mean, he has eight deaths. That's a problem. That's a lot of deaths. Um, so, for Leviathan, maybe this is the time they can get a tier 3 tower. I don't think so. There shouldn't be a buyback. Yeah, there isn't a buyback for, for DK, but they should be able to defend this. They, they might lose their tier 3. I don't think they'll lose their racks, though. 
move in. They want to just finish it off, and they do. Jenkins also shows up. He had recently picked no up that Boots of Travel. Now, he's going to be fast as ever, especially if he gets off that ultimate. And look at this tower be, or begin to crumble. One rack's already a fall right here. TC is not around, and Weaver has to be careful on how he commits, because Skyrack with that force step could quickly remove his Lincolns, and then they could just burst him down. And Mike has already shown that even when he jumps in, it ultimately can just quickly fall apart. Shoots a rocket on the way out, but Ultimately, Leviathan, very happy with that exchange. They take down both racks just like that. And folks, we are looking at the start of an upset right here for Team Leviathan to come on top in their first debut in the main season of Summit 2 America. Shredder actually has a desk later. Um, so he's going to be shredding some things, including yes, buildings. Baby. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I like <laughs> it. I like <laughs> That's it. That's awful. I'm here all week, folks. But... Uh, <laughs> He's going bottom. He's going to push out the wave. They'll probably go for Roshan next, although Nyx Assassins are one step ahead, although they are pretty far behind in terms of the, the graph here and, and just the game in general. Leviathan are impressing me with their play. Nyx Assassins are, are not. This is not, their game. this is not their game right now. They're in a bit of a rough spot. Jenkins is actually just going to kill Whitebeard. Oh, Jenkins, come on, buddy. Oh, uh, he doesn't quite look in to peek and see what's happening. Now he sees that there was a, a lingering Snob member making a go, but they're just going to swoop in and take advantage of this. I don't think they're afraid of a fight, so if a fight even comes their way, they're happy to take it, but it's going to be Rose Jenkins, who could circle the outside perimeter, just in case something does happen, but, you know, before I can even finish that Shredder with that Desolator, just makes quick work of Roche, and they hand them the Aegis, and now with the benefit of that extra life, they're just going to continue to push on in here and try to put a lid on this game, and for Sneaky Nyx Assassins, they're in desperate mode, they are pushing out all the other lanes as much as possible, they want to relieve as much pressure, but Whitebeard scouted out, throws out the Sprout, Fluff is going to be there as well. Drops the zoning tombstone, and they quickly make their retreat. Yeah, I mean, this is just... Whitebeard has not had that big an effect this game on that four position uh, Nature's Prophet, unfortunately. And uh, Jenkins actually is going to get caught out. Oh, four staff down to the low ground. He might be able to get away here. Hookshot, he blinks away. What a player. Wow. Jenkins gets out. He still is getting chased down by Mike, but he's nowhere near. And, and Mike has to actually teeth back to the base as they're getting their tier three tower destroyed. I'll have to back away. Oh, flump back, flump down. Sunken, a killing spree. Skyrath Mage has been putting in overtime right now this game. Shibi is right in the fray right now. Gets briefly silenced up, and now he gets the split off. Mike tries to get him in with the cogs. Mike ends up falling. Shredder now under big pressure from TC. But Jenkins jumps in and says, look at me, Dragon, and he trains him. Now a double kill from him as he catches out Whitebeard. Oh, he can't get the third call, unfortunately, but still, this might be it. The towel might be thrown in from Sneaky Nyx Assassins as they're about to lose a second set of racks to Team Leviathan, formerly known as Flipside Tactics NA, and they have done it. The Sneaky Knicks Assassins will fall. Team Leviathan pick up their first victory here in day number one of Summit 2 by G2A.com America. Wow, oh wow. Who expected such a performance from them? Yeah, that that uh, that was impressive from Leviathan. Uh, Sneaky Knicks Assassins, and again, without Ush. I mean, KVH is a good player, and that's not the reason why they lost. I feel like.